Hello folks and welcome to this week's Music Alerts, where I tell you what I've received through the post this week. This is a bit of a newsy show and tell thing, so you know what physical music media is out and about. Let's start with CD. And let's start with West London-based band Three Mile Shout and their debut album Low Battery on the who said that? Records label. Good name for a record label. This is a jazz blues rock outfit who, according to their website, because I've had a look, became fed up playing in covers bands and decided to produce new original music and good for them. Now, from what I can gather, we have three, well, three guys called Richard for a kickoff. But apart from that, three mature guys who've seen life and have brought that experience and that vibe into their new music. They know their way around a song. Do I think this album's gonna set the world alight? Well, no, no, it's not. Will it make them rich superstars? Well, sorry guys, no, I don't think it will. Is it worth a listen? Is it worth your time? I would say yes. This is an honest work from honest musicians, and I think you two need to connect. There's some good stuff on this one. Speaking of blues now, and Repertoire, the UK audiophile label, they have a wonderful live box set devoted to Stone the Crows called Transmissions. This is a six disc set comprising four CDs and two DVDs featuring three hours of live European concert TV footage spanning 1970 to 1973. This is the sort of thing Repertoire does best, in my opinion, and it includes the excellent Beat Club TV appearances in Germany. There is the, how do you pronounce it, Pop De in Paris, and the Montreux Jazz Festival, and more. There's lots of interesting chat in the included booklet. This is an essential purchase for anyone into the band or blues rock in general. Related to Stone the Crows by theme, if nothing else, I suppose, is a new release from Rockstar. This is a three CD set called Mighty Good, presented in a multi-gate fold digipack. Boy Meets Girls was a TV series produced by the UK chap Jack Good and director Rita Gillespie. And it was positioned as a follow-up to their own successful TV show, The UK's Oh Boy. Now, some of you might remember Jack Good as the producer of the TV series 6-5 Special, and also, for those with a long memory, something called Wham! Not the group, the TV show. Jack Good was a busy boy. He was also the manager of the likes of Billy Fury, uh, Marty Wilde, Cliff Richard, and many more. So what you've got on this particular box set is output of rare off uh, recordings archived by fans onto reel-to-reel -reel tape at the time of broadcast. So from what I can make out, I think we have songs from 14 of the 26 aired shows. Oh, and there is a 64, an excellent, actually, 64 page booklet that tells the whole fascinating story of the show itself. Expect to hear music from Billy Fury, Gene Vincent, Johnny Cash, Joe Brown, Eddie Cochran, Marty Wilde, and many more. Two from the UK outfit, Jasmine Now, and firstly, a duo, a couple of guys called the Blue Diamonds, who were really the Dutch Everly Brothers. Well, that's what this particular compilation says on the cover, and who am I to argue? It's a 32-track compilation that covers their time on Decca and Fontana, and the pair had a 1960 mega-hit called Ramona, and in fact actually did cover many of the songs from the Everly Brothers. Also from Jasmine is Grady Martin, who needs more publicity, I think. He seems a, a decent chap. This one, this collection, is called The Session, and The Session because, well, Martin was a session guitarist for a whole range of country and rockabilly artists. He was the guy who played guitar on Marty Robbins' hit El Paso, for example. He actually recorded that famous guitar piece in one take. He was also there backing Loretta Lynn 
with coal miner's daughter. He also backed the likes of Elvis, Buddy Holly, Arlo Guthrie, and many more. This 32-track compilation offers a, a meaty slice of his work. First up in the vinyl section is Ismay and Desert Pavement. Ismay is Avery Hellman, singer-songwriter, plus multi-instrumentalist and producer Andrew Marlin. This is a kind of alt country LP of country tales in song form, and given that Hellman has done her share of actual farming, there's some credibility behind her vocal delivery here. That vocal and accompanying production offers a clean, open, spacious canvas that tells the tale of people, animals, and things. Scar revivalists, the beat, or the English beat to my American friends. So the beat, therefore, produced a stonking debut back in 1980, and this is it. It's a reissue of that LP, this time via Rhino. I Just Can't Stop It, the album features singles like Mirror in the Bathroom, Hands Off, She's Mine, Tears of a Clown, Can't Get Used to Losing You, and many more. This is a it's rather a hit-packed release, and no mistake. And I appreciated the sleeve thank you to DJ John Peel, who did a lot to support them back in their early days. There's a diverse style set on this LP, which only adds to the magic. Next, Sandelica's Man, Myth and Magic is first and foremost a magnificent package in and of itself, as you'll be seeing here. Beautiful art, die-cut sleeve cutouts, a poster, the works. According to the band, this LP is the third instalment of a quartet of albums examining man's relationship with religion, magic, myths himself, and the planet he inhabits. Oh, how I love big themes. Instrumental prog, to be exact, merged with space rock and psychedelia, but also a smattering of kraut rock, a bit of early Pink Floyd, some Hawkwind even. There are four tracks on this one of 15 to 20 minutes each. This is complex stuff. It's expansive and packed with ideas. So in other words, it's rather wonderful. Next from Unday Records comes Porcelain. I think it's Porcelain Id. I initially thought of Porcelain ID. I think it's Porcelain Id. And his debut LP, Bibi One, otherwise known as Hubert Tashimi, I think, apologies if not, from Rwanda. What you have here, well, it sounds like modern pop, rather mature modern pop, I would say. Earnest, emotional. Two now from the Crass Records label and the label's continuation of re-releasing associated artists' works. Works that were, you could say, rather limited back in the day. Both of the releases featured here include wonderful sleeve art and fold-out posters. First up is Can't Cheat Karma by Zounds, a post-punk outfit from Reading in the UK. This release was originally released as a 7-inch EP in 1980, but this reissue helps the sound quality to, well, to improve by remastering the whole thing onto a 12-inch disc. Next is a Farce by Rudimentary Penny, Peeny? I don't think we need to go any further than that, do we? A British punk band from London. This one was originally released on the Crass label in 1982. It's described as an EP, but it actually spans 11 tracks. However, each track is pretty short, under a minute, some just under two minutes. Both of these classic punk sounds offer punk values, as you'd expect, and a heap of interesting ideas. Angry ideas, I admit, but ideas nevertheless, if you care to take note and listen. And that's your lot folks, thank you very much for staying to the end of this video, and if I could ask you down below if you can click on the like and subscribe buttons, it will help this channel enormously. Further down there are links to my website, my Facebook group, and my Patreon page. On that Patreon page there is the exclusive weekly video, there's one as this week, 
uh, called Hi-Fi News, etc., which offers, as you might expect, Hi-Fi News. There are hints and tips in there. There's some music-based trivia. Lots of goodies, in other words. So check it out. There's lots of other goodies too. There's buyers' guides and features, written video, the whole thing, all kinds of stuff. The links for all of those things are down in the description. As I say, I will be back uh, next Friday uh, with another one of these. I hope to have your company. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.